Oh, so nearby Bradanisha, I'm going to once again apologise to the audience at home for me looking just so red and dishevelled. It's very warm in the UK right now, so I'm going to open, crack open this ice cold beer and be like, oh. And this isn't an ad for this beer, but we are talking about advertisements today. I want somebody to take that noise clip and just isolate it. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've made much worse noises. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> I didn't, you know, it's fine. I'll put a flake in it. Advertising is pretty much the only part of the creative industry, besides potentially making Pokemon games, where you know for a fact 99% of your intended audience is going to hate whatever you do. I'm proud of that line. <laughs> I wrote that after Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out. I bought it, I, I played it, I still complained, but god damn, I'm gonna play me some Pokemon. Fuck you, Pokemon, the hooks you've got into me already. I bought. Uh, Violet earlier this year, but I've just kind of, since we've got the cat, I've, been, yeah. I've got a real, I've got a real, real animal. To be fair, the cat's in higher definition, and it has more frames of animation, so. Huh. But every now and again, though, a company will release an ad of such legendarily shitty quality that it just transcends the media. For example, just consider what happened with Ferrero Rocher. Or Rocher? Is it Ferrero Rocher? I think you should say Rocher. Rocher! Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. Let's try and keep it classic. Do you know what Ferrero Rocher is? A classy brand, as we'll discuss in a moment. But yes. Um, just consider the advert they made in the 1990s that was so bad it took the company over two decades to shape the image their company got as a result. So, guys, what do you know about some Ferrero Rocher? Because I think Americans might not be familiar with Ferrero Rocher. Because I'm going to keep saying that. It's, it's fun to say, it's a fun word. America's might not be familiar, so describe for uh, Rocher for the um, audience at home. It's like um, it's a praline like, centre. Yeah, it's hazelnut, isn't it? Yes. With it, a, it's a nut wafery, chocolate. It's, it's a sphere with a weight. It's, it's nut centre. chocolate. Stop describing, like, <laughs> stop describing like Jamie Oliver. It's nut chocolate. It is a hazelnut covered in hazelnut creme, covered like coating chocolate, and here's the important part then wrapped in gold foil. Ferrero Rocher. Celebration has arrived. Did you mean to say creme? Creme. Yes, the creme. <laughs> creme. That like creme de la creme. I'm trying to be posh. I'm speaking like posh. And oh. yet you haven't got us for trying to be described oh, like Jay Oliver well, oh, Pat, That's the gimmick now, isn't it? So the most important like feature, and possibly one of the most iconic parts of the brand itself, is that gold foil, yeah. which gives the Ferrero Rocher, the illusion of being a classy product. And I'm going to use classy in big words here, so it looks fancy. It's That thing is like it's caviar served on an aluminum tray. What's your favourite example of a product that pretends to be expensive and just isn't? Um, Stella. <laughs> Stella Artois. Cidre. So here's a funny... So here's a, so here's a fun fact. So, in the UK, there is a brand of beer called Stella Artois, and I think in America they actually do, because it's, it's technically it's imported beer, they do sell it as fancy. But over in the UK, it is known collectively as what, guys? <laughs> wife beer. Wife beater. <laughs> and that's not in reference to the wife beater vest, it's because it is, it has the association of being drunken by very loud northern men who are abusive to their wives. And that reputation is so ingrained in British culture I guarantee you, every British person at home, mouth the words wife beater along with Brad and Nisha. <laughs> you get your vodka, you drink your litre, you drink your Stella and become a wife beater. Whack, whack, put you in the back, you're gonna hit you like a grandma smack. Oh, I remember Cidre. Yeah, so, and what they, and like, you know, the company is aware of this. They've never acknowledged it, but they obviously know. Because every person in Britain, like, past, like, you know, that sign on the M2 that says the North, calls it wife beater. And it's just like that thing, of, oh, can I get a can of Stella, a can of wife beater? So what the company tried to do is when they entered the quite lucrative and at the time nascent cider market, because cider was becoming a big thing, which in cider itself doesn't have the best reputation. We all know about like, you know, Frosty Jack. <laughs> well, we all know about some Frosty Jack or Frosty Josh, our friend, or if you're me, and when I was like 18, and I'd, I lived off my 30 pounds a week EMA for college, I had Barnstormer. Oh, and Barnstormer was three pounds 
Um, it's three pounds for three liters of the cheapest, nastiest cider you've ever seen. Yeah, one time uh, when I went camping, obviously we were bringing drink with us, and it was cheaper to buy the massive three liter bottles of cider. Yeah, worst drinking experience I've ever had. They're all, it's awful. Yeah, and that's thing. Cider itself doesn't have the best reputation in the UK. Something like you know, alcohol brands were trying to change at the time, and Stella especially wanted to change because like, well. We make a product that everyone calls wife beater, and now we're going to make cider. So they they made cider called Cidre, and they released a bunch of pretentious as all fuck adverts of just some knobhead in a suit going, it's not cider, it's Cidre, <laughs> Stella, and everyone just calls wife beater. It has come to my attention that a few people still don't know that Stella Artois has launched a Cidre. Not cider. C'est Cidre. <laughs> I love the difference as well between like the fact that it's Artois and yeah. then Stella. Yeah. Fucking well, Stella. Well, that's the thing as well, no northerner can It's like when you get a northerner, it's like Pinot Grigio. <laughs> it's like, get some Pinot Grigio. Un poco bit, por favor. Mmm. Picked up a bit of the lingo, have you? Oh, Merlot. <laughs> get some Merlot. Del, Del Boy, a glass of Pernod. Yeah, oh, Pernod. Okay, it is, um, uh, Sam Miguel. Sam Miguel, yeah. Oh, God. No one says Miguel. People. Yeah, well, I always worked at City Hall. You Some get, like, 50-year-old men saying, I'm quite a Miguel, right? And then, you know, there's a lot of nicknames for stuff as well. Like, I'm drinking Desperado, me and I've got Desi D. you got to get your Desi. you got to get your Desi D. Do you have any, like, nicknames for the alcoholic beverages you happen to imbibe and enjoy? The there's the cocktail that we have. There's a, a local gaming bar we go to. There's yeah. a cocktail. The name of the cocktail is Chateau Romani. Ooh. But oh, we yeah. call it the chocolatey Baileys thing. The chocolatey Baileys thing, that's not bad. <laughs> it's got chocolate and Baileys in it. Yeah. It's the one that Brexit. Oh, it's um, Carlin, I think. Carlin calls it Brexit. Uh, Brexit. Fight of Brexit. Fight of Brexit. Oh, yeah, that's the thing, like, then it's just, they try to shake that brand. And, like, even the adverts for Stella Art, because it sounds posh. And I think, in, I was in America once. And I ordered, oh, what's on the, like, you know, the imported beer list? And they were selling, I shit you not, Stella. And they were selling it as like, and they have this thing like, an imported British classic. <laughs> like, it's fucking one of those things. Yeah. Oh, so for Americans, it's equal like Pabst, I think, it's other beer there. Yeah, yeah, example. Pabst the River. Pabst the River, you know, it's just this bottom of the fucking barrel. Shit that no one cares about. Oh, sorry, I dragged you away from Ferrero Rocher for long enough. So. It's a similar example, isn't it? it? Is. Like, you know, it's a company that's trying to act like it's classic. But they made an ad that damaged the reputation. Yes, yeah, so, like, everyone in the UK, at least, knew, like, Ferrero Rocher, it's not posh. Like, it costs five pounds, but it looks posh. And uh, the brand released an advert titled, right here, The Ambassador's Party, which, oddly enough, takes place at a swanky party being thrown by an ambassador. And, just, you know, a few seconds into the advert, you see it. You see the triangle of greatness. It's the pyramid. It's the pyramid, yes. Like, it's a very, very iconic image in pop culture. The pyramid of Ferrero Rocher walks through the parte. Captivates his guest. And they're like, you know, you have all these like rich ass motherfuckers in their tuxedos and their gloves. They're like, oh my ambassador, with this Ferrero Rocher, you really are spoiling us. With this Rocher, you're really spoiling us. Ferrero Rocher. A sign of good taste. And it's like exactly as cringy as I'm sounding, if not worse. I'll put the clip in. And just like everyone at the party is losing their minds over these like tiny little, like, you know, these gold foil covered rabbit turds. After you put the ad in, I think you should put the ad in again, but with you doing the voiceover. Ferrero Rocher! I'm only saying it like Freezer does in Dragon Ball Bridge. <laughs> when he says like, Rose, hey! <laughs> Can only imagine it like that. Maybe I'll get a nice glass of white and Merlot or. Dare I say it? A rosé! <laughs> I've got other things to do today, you know. Like decide what wine will I have for dinner tonight. White wine, red wine, or dare I say, rosé. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> well, sort of that pie, like, oh, I could get a Ferrero Rocher to go with my Stella Artois Cidre. Yes, oh, can I get a Stella Artois barman? Oh, we only have the Cidre. Oh, what a delightful beverage. <laughs> The fruity notes dance on my tongue and I'll cribble Lee Mac joke. I'm getting pissed. <laughs> is the old classic. But yeah. And as I said, nobody anywhere thought these things were posh or classic. But the company was so desperately trying to get across that they are. And this advert just made them a laughing stock. So that's the thing. Like, they are, these rich motherfuckers at this ambassador's pie are losing their minds over 
what, like, you know, less than a Big Mac's worth of chocolate. To give them credit though, I would lose my mind if somebody had taken the time. If it was the pyramid, to stack yeah. them into the pyramid. Like, the only reason we pray is to get the pyramid. <laughs> but it's a fucking Christmas tree of chocolate. But it's that thing of like, you know, the company was so desperate to like get their thing across it's like fancy and high end, and then it comes with like three ninety nine and like Woolworths. It's the present you get your mum in it. She's like when you're a kid, like, oh it looks posh, it's gold. <laughs> Admittedly. You know, we've shitting on the ad for a Rochette. I like it. Yeah. I, I like yeah. praline. I like the, the hazelnut chocolate flavour. Mm-hmm. You basically, you know, it's Nutella. It's great. It makes a really nice milkshake. Oh, oh that would yeah. be good. Yeah. So good. It's like the Kinder Bueno. It's like yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I love like. Has it hazelnut taste? Similar thing, yeah. Nice. Or Nutella, which is just like, you know, we've always said like, Nutella's not really chocolate, it's hazelnut. And that's how they're so cheap. That's how they get away with it. But yeah, they're, they're nice. It's just that thing of like, just understand what you want. It's like. Stella, like plenty of people drink it, plenty of people enjoy it, but just the fact they're trying to like so desperately cast off this image of wife beater. <laughs> they're really trying, and uh, understandably, yeah, I won't want that reputation either. Fucking yeah, mate, it's MC Burberry is singing about his fucking one and only girlfriend. Her name's Stella. Yeah, ah, don't fucking bother starting. It's like, um, if Lynx or something tries to do one of those really posh perfume adverts. <laughs> yeah. What's going Lynx is it like Lynx or Axe Body Spray for Americans? Like was in a similar boat where they had their adverts were too successful. Do you remember the adverts where it'd be like, you know, guys putting it on and then like women flock to them? Yes. False advertising. I, I used to wear it, no one ever flocked to me. But no, they had to, ran away from me. But joke, they had to stop doing those adverts because the guys they would always show, because I think in modern ones it's always like a hot guy putting on and then a hot lady comes over. But the adverts used to be like, you know, a nerdy bookish guy, like, you know, like, you know, the pigeon chest, putting it on like books and women come with it. And the company did some market research and found out like just why are our sales downside because people think that it's only worn by virgins. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a quote from their research. Of just like yeah, because what I remember at school you get picked on for wearing it's like only virgin. Give me I'm like thirteen. We're just like oh, only virgins wear links. I I always used to wonder why people would make fun of me when I wore like Links Africa. I didn't realize that was the reason. It's because yeah, because the advert showed that only fucking losers wear links, and that's like they they didn't intend for that. They thought oh no, anyone wearing it will be irresistible, but all that ad showed fucking losers using it. It's like well, that's not a brand association we want. From now on, that's my headcanon for why I was terrible with women when I was younger. Is it possible possible to get rid of your links? I've got so I get every year every Christmas. What what do you get if you're if you're a guy over twenty five with aunties and uncles? What do you get for Christmas? You get the little special box set that has the shampoo and the deal. The links Africa, yeah. I get it. I sometimes get added for a joke. It's like, it is a traditional Lynx Africa set. I actually like the smell of Lynx Africa. I only like it because to me it just smells like it's like my childhood. <laughs> like Christmas Day for me is me and my brother just throwing cans of Lynx Africa at each other. Why are all your stories being people up with stuff? I'll, I'll never forget when we used to play a game called Murder in the Dark. Yeah, oh it's my, great. Oh my but you God. turn all the lights out and, and throw shit at each other. Yeah. Did you play? No, okay. I just know you well enough. And one day my mate just duct taped the lid down on some links and just threw it in into the room. It was like murder in the dark. And there was just right. these kind of links fucking going crazy in the middle of the room. When I was in school, we used to use them for flamethrowers, which yeah. do not do at home. It is incredibly dangerous. It is, yes. So speaking of you know what else was dangerous, at least at a stock price for fucking Ferrero, <laughs> Ooh, nice. this advert. Because it was dunked on from orbit almost immediately. It was a pop culture sensation. But the bad one, where it's like, oh, you do, do you think like, don't be the main character on Twitter? Is that like, don't be the thing that hack comedians are mentioning on panel shows that uh, week? And that's what it was. And like, everyone made fun of it, and the company were very embarrassed. So embarrassed, in fact, that they took the advert down. Oh no! And that's, and that's how you know that it bothered them. 
The fact they took it down means you know it bothered them. You'd think there's at least like the publicity, but I guess in that sense, it's like we care so much about our. Image. That's the thing that you think like any company is like all, all publicity is good publicity, but not if you're trying to establish a brand. Not if you've got like a very a certain reputation you want to cultivate. Did the sales change? The sales didn't, but it's that thing of like, sales were pretty consistent. It's more just like, our brand is in the news because people are making fun of it. Because like, anytime I've seen any sort of like, controversy surrounding a brand, there's a little part of my brain that's like, I want that now. Yeah. Like, you remember the whole thing about the lasagna and the horse? Yeah, I want When, when that was good, I was like, I want some horse lasagna. I could, I could go for a bit of horse. Yeah. I could go for that. <laughs> it's pretty lean meat. Probably leaner than beef. I don't know about you, but when I ate a burger, I used to think, hmm, what a tasty compacted disc of mint tissue scrapings blasted off a cow carcass with a high-pressure hose and a fly-blown abattoir ringing with the incoherent, agonised howls of simple beasts dying from a single bolt gun shot to the forehead. But now it turns out it might not have been as appetising as that. Good evening. Supermarket shelves are being cleared of frozen burgers tonight after reports that some contain DNA from horses. A little bit of spirit. But it's the same thing, isn't it? But no, the sales weren't really impacted. It was more just the brand looked bad. And I can speak to this a little bit because, you know, certain brands want to cultivate a certain image or reputation. Um, I used to go out with a girl who worked for Coca-Cola. She was on their like, branding team. And she helped oversee the launch of Coke Zero. Fun fact for anyone out there who doesn't know this, the only reason Coke Zero exists is it's exactly the same as Diet Coke. People say it tastes different, they can taste it. it's not, it's all marketing. The only reason that they have Coke Zero and Diet Coke is because, for decades, Coca-Cola had marketed Diet Coke to women. Diet Coke break. Diet Coke break. Yeah, I remember you saying this because she was told specifically to only give the cans to men. Yeah, hand out the cans to men because at the time, it might seem a bit silly now given like the ubiquity of diet soft drinks, but at the time, diet drinks were seen as being for women and that's something that Coca-Cola themselves helped create. That image of diet drinks being for women because all their adverts had, and they're pretty iconic, they're good ads, they were good. They got like, you know, the yeah, brand new things. There's ones where it's like women sitting around watching like a topless guy and yeah. like, cracking over in a cab. And those adverts were really good and got them a lot of sales and people gen generally fondly remember those. Like, you know, you're remembering it years later. That's a good ad. But the subtle thing in plants in your mind is, well, diet drinks are for women. So when they tried to like, oh, well, diet drinks are now more popular. How do we market? It's either we have to go undo 35 years of like advertising conditioning or make a new drink. And that's why. Coke Zero is in like, you know, the black can. That is basically that thing they do with um, uh, like your tactical, isn't it? Like man wipes. Or like, you know, man yogurt. Like make it, you know, make it matte black. Like, you know, bold, dark yeah, colours. It's like anything, if you go to like the supermarket stuff, you go down the aisle for like, you know, shower gel and shampoo. Yeah. For men, air quotes, it's all just black colours. It's all just blacks and dogs. Action turbo. With names like that, I think. The rules have changed. Now there is no up or down. Introducing Mach 3 Turbo. Total comfort whether you shave down or up. Even like, like just the design of the bottles, like think, like yeah. Lynx Africa, like that bottle shape. It's like aggressive, the shape design, isn't it? It's like, it's like got angles to it and stuff like that. It, it looks like a piece out of a fucking car, that's yeah. the idea. <laughs> and so like, people out there might be like rolling their eyes at this, but no, there are billions of dollars over like you know the last couple of decades got into research in this like it is a science this is this the point. kind of stuff that creates problems though like you and i are the same age we would have grown up during the same time mm -hmm. obviously um mm -hmm. are there any things when you were young that you remember you used to get made fun of or you shouldn't do because people would say it either made you effeminate or it, it meant you were gay like, oh yeah that's uh, a really popular one one of my like, favorite reddit threads just like hey guys What's the thing you've been told not to do because it's gay? Yeah. And the amount of stuff that I know, the, the, the toxic masculinity of like, you know, drinking diet drinks. I think my favorite is drinking water. As a guy's like, I got made fun of for drinking water because that's gay. Because he's drunk sparkling water. The one that always comes back to me is you. Were, I wasn't allowed to wear my backpack on two shoulders. Yeah. I have to wear one strap. If you wear two shoulders, you're gay. It's just, yeah. Sense. Yeah. Just no, not so that. Stupid. That's more like social, like. But the, but this a social thing. But yeah, but marketing yeah. campaign into you know the diet drinks being gay mm -hmm. is that thing like you know literally decades of advertising that like, diet drinks are a woman's drink. And it's like I'm sure there are men out there watching this who've like you know had someone 
make fun of them or question their masculinity for drinking a diet drink or, you know, a gin Co- and tonic. Cocktails. Cocktails. Yeah. 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 Men weren't allowed to drink cider no, or like, cocktails. Mm-hmm. Have to have beer. It's like, men drink beer. And it's like, you know, women drink cocktails. And then you even have, like, you know, they try to do that course correct with that. I'm like, oh, with manly cocktails, like bourbon and stuff like that. <laughs> women. You're leaking, aging, hairy, overweight, and everything hurts. And your children's clothes are filthy. No wonder men long for other, less clammy women. For God's sake, sort yourself out. Men, shave and get drunk. Because you're already brilliant. I think a good point to make as well, if there are people out there who are obviously understanding this and agreeing with it, this is the exact same thing happening nowadays with things like wearing dresses. Mm-hmm. Like, if we're told that men can't wear a dress because it's a woman's clothing. Unless it's a kilt. Uh, yeah. Unless it's a kilt that is manly. It's a kilt comes with a knife. The, it's the exact same situation of being like, you can't do this thing because apparently you're not allowed to, which is so daft. It sounds so exhausting to live your life in a way where you just don't like self-expression. Or you want to limit self-expression. It's like those stories you hear about like dads and stuff like taking like colours away, like co- literally like um, colours away from their kids, like their drawings. Like, oh, I was drawing too many bright colours. Like literally taking colour out of their you No, know, because it's gay. <laughs> or kids playing with toys. And it's like, oh no, that toy, I don't like you playing with that toy. It's like you're literally removing like, you know, something your child enjoys. Like you're removing visual stimulation from their peripheral because it makes you because you're insecure and it's like what an exhausting way to live your life. Also something like obviously there's like stereotypes where when you give um girls like dolls and yeah. and babies to play with but Which, not little boys. But it's like why not? Because obviously they don't be parents. Yeah. But they literally have yeah. to make action man to give boys dolls. Like, and they call them action figures. They're not dolls, they're action figures. It's a doll. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Or maybe Barbie's obviously an action figure. Like, oh yeah. I, I, I want to do it the other way, yeah, I want Barbies to be start called action figures. It's just annoying when like toys like that, like, um, cause I, I loved this when I was younger, I had a little mini plastic kitchen. Yeah. But it's like, oh, that would be a girl's toy. Then you think it's back like, as well, yeah. And then it's re- reinforcing really patriarchal gender roles. Like, oh yeah, it's a girl's toy, have like a baby. Mattel's new baby secret. She whispers just to you. <laughs> Her lips really move. I want to tell you something. It's almost unbelievable. I remember when I was a kid, I had like, I had, I had like obviously Barbies, Action Men, and cars. I, had like, I used to love cars. So I mean, everyone had that car rug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that was my favourite. One of the coolest things I've ever seen is like a suit jacket made from that. What? <laughs> yeah, someone like turn that into a, they turn it into like a blazer and they say they wear it to like a nights out or speed dates. Like and then. It's so warm. But. <laughs> You want to get mad fucking late yeah, wearing that. Cars hey, that's a not what what a great um, uh, opener for a first date, isn't it? <laughs> so for our Russia, oh yeah, so for our Russia. Russia. So do you want makes this advert really funny? Is it the advert itself? Well, yeah, it's funny, but <laughs> the people making it were one hundred percent serious. Because a lot of people thought, well, this is actually kind of genius. Like everyone knows that for our Russia is like it's not posh. And then playing this up, it's like, is this satire? Is this them playing up the like them like to the idea that people think it's classy when it costs four pounds? And like, you know, it's a decent job, but it's, like, you know, it's not anything special. It's like, no, they legit thought they would change the way people viewed the brand with this advert as oh god, the, the sky raisins in the pterodactyl. So sky raisins, and that's why they took the ad down. And I shit you not, they re-recorded the whole thing, but took out all the cringy dialogue and re-released it. A host's exquisite taste that captivates his guests. Ferrero Rocher, a taste sensation, rich, luxurious, unique. Excellent. Monsieur, with Ferrero Rocher, you're really spoiling us. So was the no dialogue at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they reshot it to make the it. The goes silent <laughs> when the Ferrero Rocher <laughs> comes in. Well, but they reshot it to take out all the dialogue and just have it like a more standard advert, which I think is like, that's kind of worse. At least the original one was memorable. Maybe not for the reasons that the company liked, but it was memorable. The new one, which I'll obviously put a clip in, is just like, just, yeah, it's like, it's like Eddie, you know, it's like when you watch like an ad for a phone, it's like a person on beach holding phone. It's like, yeah, it's a fucking phone. 
Like, why would I? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna remember the ad for the iPhone three, or five, or seven, or ten, because it's just a fucking advert for a film. But like, there's plenty of adverts out there I will remember, like the Ferrero Rocher one. <laughs> Core memory right there. One that I, there's two I always remember every time I eat these things. One it all sounds like. Yeah, that's like, Yeah, so if, if the camera's wobbling a little bit, it's because the camera's on a table today. Yeah, I won't touch it. But yeah, there's always two adverts I always remember because every time I have these yeah, you know, uh, foods but... is the Terry's Chocolate Orange. Don't Jesus. tap it, yeah. whack it. And just dawn French, <laughs> be like, BOOM! Like whacking it with hammer. Terry's Chocolate Orange. It's not Terry's, it's mine. And the other one is the Jaffa Cakes one. I'm sure you remember that. Full moon, <laughs> half moon. Oh, yeah. No moon. Full moon. Full moon. Half moon. Half moon. Mm. Total eclipse. Total eclipse. So that's the thing, like, so, um, uh, you know, to end on, just, yeah, the company was really embarrassed, they, they didn't like it, they released really the ad. And just the reputation was forever ruined, at least for an entire generation of ads. Forever, forever ruined. <laughs> now, let's just talk about memorable ads. And on some level, I do get it. Companies want to cultivate a specific image of their products. And I also get that, you know, making a creative, interesting advert is difficult because not a lot of people in the creative industry are all that creative. And I'm reminded of an advert I saw, I think it was on, by watching some movies on Prime, and uh, there was an ad that kept playing. It was an ad for Pinterest. And it's a, a girl getting ready for a date. And she's like, you know, it just shows you what, I don't know the specifics of the ad, but like, it's just like, she's like, oh, recipes, setting up like the table setting, doing all this, that, that. And then 40 minutes later, advert played the same advert. And the person I was with, we started talking about it, because this advert was annoying us, because every time it was an ad, that one advert played. I said, do you be more interesting? If they did five of these adverts, like a story, and they told us, yeah, they've told yeah. a story. Yeah. Really I said, yeah. What they should do, like, they should have just kept the actress in and done five adverts. They should say, okay, how many ads will play during, like, you know, a, a movie on Prime? Because clearly, obviously, they paid for advertising during movies. Um, five. Okay, record five short vignettes of the date going along, and maybe you could even do like an ARG thing of like different perspectives, like the guy going to his date. An ARG ad campaign where all the, all the different ads playing like the start of YouTube videos would do so well. Yeah, or just I think like, you know, have a, a, a story. So that way, every time a new ad comes, you're not like, it's not like, oh, fucking this ad again. It's like, oh, what's happening now? You get drawn in. You get drawn in, yeah. It's like a mini and say like We talked about like, Long Long Man, didn't we, before? Like that gum advertisement where it's Long Long Man. <laughs> where it's like an entire, like, 10 minute saga of this guy dating a girl. Long Long. Sagata Sanjiro as well. Like yeah. He, he had a bit of a storyline. Yeah. Sagata Sanjiro. Sagata Sanjiro. Sagata Sanjiro. Sagata Sanjiro. And I just thought, and then me and my friend would look at him, well, that'd cost money. And that, it's, do you know what's cheaper not doing that? Or you just pay a fucking YouTuber to do it for you. Like, people, there are people online who make their careers out of making those kind of ads or, or like sketches and things. Like, mm -hmm. the Ferrero Rocher one we've talked about sounds like an ad, like a parody sketch from a YouTuber. A lot of ads are the worst thing that an ad could be, and that's forgettable. And to make an ad that's not forgettable, you need to be creative and usually it costs money. Or it'd be really annoying 
so that it sticks in your mind. Which so is the other way, and a lot of companies prefer to do that. Yeah. And we don't want to talk about those, but I just want to... Because you guys must remember this, right? Of, do you remember the BT adverts? Because I think this might be one of the greatest advertising campaigns of all time. Is that, is that the one with the, the telephone on the wheels? No. The, do you remember that series of adverts for BT? Where it was the guy dating a girl. And it's like, oh, he's calling her for the first date. And it's like that guy from like my family. Hi, I'm Adam. I've met a girl. She's now my girlfriend. Well, not a girl exactly. She's a grown woman with two kids. I'm pretty certain they've all moved in with me. Somehow I'm back doing homework. Go wireless with BT Broadband. Well, Do you remember I mean, this? Rob, Robert Lindhurst. No, the son. Robert Lindhurst. Nick, the son. I don't know who you mean. And the advert. Now that you've mentioned him, I, it's ringing a bell. And the advert went on for, I think, 10 years. And they told the story of this guy's entire fucking life. Like, the, the adverts initially were them, him going on a date with a girl. Then it gets, you know, then the date goes well, then they get married, then they have kids. On behalf of my wife and I, I'd like to thank you all for coming here on this wonderful day. Now, I remember the first time I met Jane, we were in a lift, which as you all know is one of those very claustrophobic spaces which go up and down a lot, and in which you can get trapped. <laughs> Not that that's a metaphor for our relationship. <laughs> and then the kids go off to college and school and all that good stuff. You've come for a room here too? Yeah, Joe. I'm Anna. And like they told an entire, like basically like a mini, like soap in the space of these adverts. And I, like, I think it was long running for like 10, 15 years. Like they had like a 15 year long advertising campaign that's centered around this one guy so telling his life story. Idea. Yeah, because you know what? People got invested in that story. And when a new ad would come out, it would get column into Oh, you get to find out more about that long running series of ads where you get to find out what this guy is doing now. I think one of the longest ads I watched on YouTube was like, there was like a two or three minute one. It was a short film that just had an ad in it. Wasn't like every YouTube video technically an ad for something? Like, you know, yeah. our Patreon! <laughs> this is a 25 minute long ad for our Patreon! Oh no. Ah, I did it! You ruined it. Um, well, no. 28 minutes, by the way. Oh. Rush, rush, rush. Rush, what are you doing? I've forgotten. People don't get to know anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought we'd not mentioned the Patreon yet, so we should do it. And that was too, that was too good a um, uh, segue to miss. Patreon, join it. I actually, I actually can't remember what I was going to say now. You know so what, I was going to suggest it as a Patreon extra. If like, yeah. Nisha could record me, we'll put it on, but I don't remember what it was. You know what, join the Discord and tell us about your favourite ad. Oh, there we go, yeah. Yeah, and we can, maybe we can post it. If you join the Patreon, there's Discord and you talk to us. Yeah. Or you can just watch we this video. We'll talk cool about too. old adverts so they'll unlock core memories. Core like, memories. I guarantee if someone out there remembers that one for BT. No, now that you when yeah. you mention the actor, I can picture mm. one of them where he's in a bedroom. Like mm. I, I vaguely remember that. Just like you know, that's the thing. Like that, that Pinterest one. And, like if they just made like five ads and it just tells the story of the date, and you could even do the thing of, like, yeah, oh, that. from the guy's perspective, him getting ready for the date, or the date goes well, the date goes poorly. Oh, you know the film. You know the film. And that's the like, thing. Now I'm getting annoyed yeah. that that advert doesn't exist because that would have been so good. That film Tag, where all those guys are playing this big game of tag. Imagine if they did a series of ads that were just people tagging each other all the way through. And every single one was a different person. Then you could string them together yeah. and make the story. But that requires you to be creative and original, and not a lot of people making adverts are creative. It's like no, have the product on screen for thirty seconds and talk about See it. See you today. That's crazy. See you today.